Good morning. It's great to have you joining us today. Uh, although we look, look to the time when we can be in church again, we want to take this opportunity to worship and share the word with you. Uh, my name is Ellen Cusack. I'm the pastor at Alloway United Methodist Church and Canton United Methodist Church. And we've been meeting virtually on Sundays at 11 o'clock. If you can um, leave us a, a comment as you watch or send us a message so we know that uh, you're joining us. Uh, this morning, as we start our time together, um, let's pray and we'll end with the Lord's Prayer. Great and glorious God, we are thankful that we can be with you today. We thank you that although we're, we're not in a church building, we're not in a sanctuary, that we can still worship you. We thank you that although you are holy, you long to be with us, Lord, uh, fallen creatures, and you want to call us your children. This day, we ask that you would continue to teach us how to worship, how to be truly thankful, and, and how to live lives that honor you. Today, we pray for those who are in the medical profession, doctors, nurses, EMTs, those who work in hospitals, who work in medical facilities. Lord, that you would give them your peace today. And Lord, we ask that you would keep them safe. We pray for those who are suffering today uh, with sickness, those who are grieving, those who are feeling alone. Father, we ask that you would help them to be aware of your continued presence with them. Lord, help us to encourage those who need encouragement. Help us to be your hands and your feet. Father, I ask that today your word would be in my mouth and that I would be hidden behind the cross. And we pray this in Jesus' name who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So we've been quarantined now for about a month. Uh, many of you have continued to go into work, but um, some of you have been working remotely. Maybe if you are able uh, to work from home, you thought you'd be able to check a few things off your to-do list. Maybe you know, clean the clock in the space. But for some of us, this staying at home hasn't been easy. Now, while I joke about not being able to get my hair done, we know that there are those who are suffering uh, during this time. Layoffs and furloughs have created new anxiety for families. Uh, providing help to your children as they complete their schoolwork at home is a challenge, especially if we're trying to work ourselves. We can become preoccupied with uh, the daily updates of the number of new cases and the number of people who have lost their lives. And some have lost loved ones and, and friends during this time. And even if we're at home with family members, we can feel as if we're alone in this. We can forget that Jesus is with us. 
Well, today our reading is from the Gospel of Luke, and we're reminded that Jesus is on the road with us. He wants to open our eyes, point us to his word, and reveal himself to us as our resurrected Savior and Lord. So this morning we will be reading from Luke 24, verses 13 to 35. Uh, you can follow along with me if you want. I'll be reading from the NIV, Luke 24, 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? And they stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem? And do you not know the things that have happened these days? What things, Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priest and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. And Jesus said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and enter his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and began to give and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened to them on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we can relate to those two walking along the road, can't we? Just picture them uh, in your mind for a moment, walking down this dusty road. It's three days after the crucifixion. It's what we now know as Easter Sunday. But they didn't know yet that there was anything to celebrate. They were downcast, uh, discouraged. The word used for them discussing things is a word that means it was almost a debate. Their discussion was intense. 
And as they were walking, Jesus joined them, but they were kept from realizing it was him. So if they were kept from realizing it was him, that says to me that they would have recognized him. They knew what Jesus looked like. And as Jesus began to talk to them, he asked them what they were talking about. Again, picture in your mind these two walking along and then just stopping. And then one of them, Cleopas, says, are you the only one who visited Jerusalem that doesn't know what happened? You know, sometimes when we're upset, we can get a little snippy. Uh, maybe during your time of staying at home, you've become a little snippy, maybe a little impatient. Of course, maybe it's really your spouse who's snippy and you're just your normal cheery self. And Cleopas continued to relate to Jesus all that had happened, how he had been handed over and was crucified and how they had hoped he would redeem Israel. Cleopas expressed his disappointment to the Savior. They killed him, and we hoped he was going to deliver us from this oppressive life that we live. Then some of the women went to the tomb, but instead of finding his body, they said they saw angels. So some of our friends went and found an empty tomb, like they said but Jesus wasn't there. I wish that we could see the expression on the face of Cleopas as he rattled off his list of disappointments. Was he just upset because his candidate for radical had been eliminated? Notice that Cleopas called Jesus a prophet. He still wasn't clear on who Jesus really was. And yet Jesus was walking beside him. And there are times when we all become discouraged or disheartened because things haven't worked out the way we wanted them to or the way we think that they should have. And in our distress, we forget that Jesus is walking right beside us. We forget that he is the risen savior. He defeated death. He's victorious. Now, uh, I'm not trying to come down hard on Cleopas, but let's look at Jesus' response. How foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? Jesus didn't say, oh, you know, I'm sorry you're upset. I understand your disappointment. It'll be okay. Jesus had told his disciples what would happen and how some of the events would take place to fulfill prophecy in the scripture. You know, it had to happen that way but they just didn't get it yet. And what did Jesus do next? He did what he always does when we come to him, short-sighted, not believing that he is a plan and has already accomplished what needs to be done. The scripture says he pointed them to the scripture and started to explain everything about himself. And we all have questions in life, whether it is during a stay at home order or when it's when we're just walking along the road of life with dirt swir swirling around our ankles. Life isn't easy. But when we come to Jesus with our concerns, he draws us beside him and reveals himself to us in a way that gives us hope. Notice that when the eyes of the two were open and they realized who Jesus was, they were excited because they realized that Jesus was alive. 
They were so excited that they turned around and at once walked the seven miles back to Jerusalem to tell the others. And that's a trip you wouldn't normally want to take in the dark of night. As we bring our pains and our questions and our disappointment to him, he not only gives us hope, but as we travel through the darkness, like the two, we can bring this renewed faith to others. But navigating through the darkness can be frightening without the light of Christ. I would encourage you, if you're discouraged today, if you have questions that don't seem to have answers, you need to recognize today that Jesus is risen and he wants to walk beside you. Luke tells us that Cleopas and his friend approached their village and they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. Stay with us. They chose to ask Jesus to join them. As they sat with Christ, their eyes were opened and they realized who he was. Well, it looks as if our time of staying at home is nearly over. They optimistic talk of when things will begin to open again. Let's use this extra time that we have inviting Jesus to sit with us and open our eyes to who he is. So practically, how do we do that? Well, I think it begins with being honest with Jesus. Jesus, you know I'm afraid. You know I don't understand why things happened as they did. You know that I need a job. You know I need help with my kids. You know I'm depressed. You know it's broken. But Jesus, I know that you're alive. I know you can guide me through this darkness, giving me life, abundant life. And after we're honest with him, we need to look for ways to spend time with him. Read your Bible. Look for devotions online. And if you need a devotional book to read, let me know and I'll get one to you. Listen to Christian radio. Say your prayers. You know, saying your prayers aren't just for kids. Tell them you're sorry for the things that you've done wrong, the, the people that you've disappointed for your sin. And as you spend this time with him, he will do just as he did with Cleopas and his friend. He will reveal himself to you so that you can build a relationship with him but be patient. It takes time. You know, Paul in Ephesians said, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. So let's make the most of this opportunity. You know, while we can't travel or go shopping or walk on the boardwalk, let's make the most of this time. Let's make the most of this opportunity as we walk through the darkness to be led by his light. John 1, 5 says, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Today, we are all walking along the road of life. Let's make the decision to walk with Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful that you are with us even though we don't realize it. We're thankful that you want us to know you, 
We're thankful that you seek us out. Lord, we ask that you would help us to seek you during this time so that as we are renewed in our faith, we can spread that hope to others. And we thank you and we love you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we thank you for joining us today and we pray that God will bless you and your family. Have a great day.